Hey, it's Peter in <laughs> Peter's Kitchen. <laughs> I have to stop slapping the logo. We are going to make tomato vegetable chicken soup. And we're going to can it in a canner. I'm not sure if it's going to be this canner or the one on the stove, depending on how many bottles uh, it fills up. So let's get started. I'm going to start with San Marzano. San Marzano makes uh, tomatoes. It's a city in Italy, product of Italy. Now they do have uh, the same thing, but it's, uh, they, they kind of like trick you. They say uh, San Marzano, but it's more like uh, in the San Marzano style. It's got to be a product of Italy, which is what I'm showing you. Where is it? Right there. Okay. So I've got that and this is what I'm going to be putting into my soup right there. So I'm going to put a can. They are whole peeled tomatoes and I got it in my nice big bowl right here. Okay. So I'm going to add, this is all cold. I'm making this cold. Yeah, I'm getting dings here. Um, and uh, so they're whole peeled tomatoes. So I'm going to kind of just cut them up. I like tomato chunks in my soup. And I'm going to add um, water to this. So, yep, it's I chunk guys it. I could put it in a blender, but it would just all get uh, blended out. Okay. And uh, let's see what we got going here. I was just talking to Liam on the phone. So hi, Liam. How you doing, big boy, huh? How's the tiger doing out there? Liam is my uh, eight-year-old friend from Canada that records videos with a Canon R5. Actually, it's his dad, but, you know, I make him feel good. So um, I've got the soup in the bowl. All right, now first I'm going to add the vegetables. So you know I'm on the keto diet, right? I was 167 and a half pounds this morning. So we're working on almost 35 pounds. So this is a package of corn and the carbohydrates is 21 grams. Holy moly. Let's compare that to like this uh, Publix Capri gland, grand, uh, brand. It's five grams. So the purpose of the keto or the low carb diet, I'm going to put this in the sink. I'm not going to use that is to actually take in a lot less sugar. So let's put this Capri blend here into the soup. Okay. So Publix is the name of our big grocery like Kroger would be in, in most of the country. Okay. So I'm going to put that in the soup. This is from the freezer. So it's frozen. This is the bag right there. Let's see if, well, if this camera will focus. So it's green wise, which means it's organic Whoop, right there. All right. And I'm going to put uh, two bags of this into the soup like so. Cut it open. So I got to put two bags and just to prove it, there's the other bag. OK, so we have uh, steam fresh mixed vegetables. Let's check out the carbohydrates on this. 10 grams. Golly gee whiz, Batman. How close can I get with this? Not that close. Okay. All right. There. You can see it there. All right. 10 grams. So uh, this is going in the sink too. So this is bird's eye steam fresh. The sugars are too high. All right. So that goes back in the freezer. And I got a bag of green beans. Let's see what the green beans are. Green beans, six grams. So it's one more than the Capri. So what's in the Capri? What did I do at the back? All right, so the Capri uh, mix uh, is greens, uh, green beans, carrots, zucchini, squash, yellow squash. So that's what's in there. And now I'm going to put a bag of string beans. So I'm making this soup cold because I'm going to can it cold. Okay. And I'm going to add my, my chicken. It's raw chicken. I bought it in cubes. Okay. Boy, this is really hard. So let's get it down into the liquid. Down into the liquid, getting the green beans. 
So let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm just breaking the green beans up a little bit so I could stir this. You know, it'd be better if I got one of those nice spatulas with the spoon. So now I can mix this up and get the water and the juice and just chop up the frozen stuff. And then I got, after I got this, I'm gonna put a little seasoning in here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm gonna put some onion powder. I'm going to put uh, a little bit of salt because I'm gonna add salt after when I open the jars to eat them. This is gonna give me jars like this that's gonna have a lid and it's gonna be uh, shelf stable, meaning I don't have to put this in the refrigerator to store it. And it's good for one, three, five, ten years. So, of course, it's not going to last here that long, and the reason for that is uh, I will rotate the stock. So at some point, I will be building up my pantry, and as I build up the pantry, I will have uh, the, the soup in stock uh, at all times. And I just have to decide how many cans I would like to have in stock. So I'm mixing the tomato, and now I'm going to add a little bit of water. So I'm going to get my uh, my cup and this is going to make a delicious tomato. San Marzano tomato. These are the good kind. Oh yeah. And this is keto. This is low carb. I'm not eating the whole bowl so I've got about 11 carbs in here now. Uh, no, I added six. So I got 16 carbs in here now. Okay. Uh, but I'm not eating this whole bowl of soup it would kind of like fill me up. Look how big this bowl is. Okay. So for you guys that like cameras and stuff, this is the new R6 camera. Well, it's not new. It's new to me. All right. And this is what it looks like. So I'm just mixing that up. And the reason for all this mixing is to kind of like make it thaw out a little bit. So let me get the... Hey, what you doing in there? So let me get the onion powder and a few of the spices and we'll continue in a moment. I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to add a teaspoon of onion powder. I'm going to add a teaspoon of onion powder. I'm going to add a teaspoon of uh, minced onion. I love this stuff. I'm going to add the rest of this jar, which is uh, parsley, dried parsley. And I'm going to add a big heaping teaspoon of ground dried mint. It's going to make it very refreshing. There we go. So that'll start to hydrate the uh, dried stuff. So I put dried mint, dried parsley, onion powder, onion flakes. Um, you know what I didn't put? Garlic. So let's add some garlic powder right across the top. There we go. And then we can resume the mixification. They use fancy stuff like, we'll incorporate all this stuff. Heck, I'm mixing the bowl up and I'm bringing the stuff up from the bottom and circulating it round and round. I got a bag of chicken here that is uh, a resealable package cut here. This is from a company called Wild Forks. If you have a Wild Fork in your area, uh, they got really good stuff. Okay, It says pull to open, but it never works for me. Let me dry my fingers. Ah, I told you. Okay, so this bag is, let me show you, this is from Wild Forks. It's Wild Fork, sorry. It's organic chicken cubes. So let's open this guy up. And it's frozen chicken. Okay, watch. Watch, watch, watch this, watch. All that is frozen and it's pre-cubed for me. It's all white meat. I would have liked it if they had made it so it's kind of like mixed. Okay, so that's like mm, maybe a little less than half the bag. So let's mix this up and see what it looks like in the soup. 
Well, somebody's going to get a big piece of chicken. Whoever gets the biggest piece of chicken wins. Okay, so as you guys are eating the chicken, whoever gets the biggest piece of chicken in the soup, you win. So I've washed uh, some ball jars and uh, the lids. They're right there. They're all washed. Uh, I did not heat them. They're uh, not sterilized either. So it's going to get in it's going to get put into the canner for 75 minutes between 240 and 250 degrees so that's designed to kill everything including botulism so i'm going to use my my drip plate right here and i'm going to pour this right in so this cup gives me uh one point one pint and i'll put that in the front because those are going to have to get cleaned okay We'll put that on there. And this one can use a little more juice, a little more chicken too. So we'll put that in the drip plate. I'm going to use this as a, like a debubbler. And you stab the soup around the edges of the jar. And you go in each jar and it, you can actually see the water level going down. So uh, that one is a little too high and this one's a little too low. So we'll have to get them to cooperate. And so what do I got in here? Tomatoes, San Marzano tomatoes. I've got, uh, that one needs a little more liquid too. So since this is soup, uh, this, this one's got too much. Okay, so, yep, it went down a little bit. And we got one more to do. So I wound up with seven jars, if I haven't said that. So I'm cleaning the seven jars for seven brothers. What movie is that? Oh, no, it's not seven jars for seven brothers. <laughs> I thought it was. Okay, but it's not. So I'm actually cleaning the threads and the rim. But we're going to do a cleaning job like every other guy that you watch. Uh, that does this. Uh, the girl that I'm learning the most from is uh, Mickey uh, Man Man Mangus Mantis or something like that. Um, Out the Back Door is the name of her channel. So I watch her videos and you could watch her videos too and you'll really re you'll learn the right way uh, to do this. Okay and I'm just adding uh, the lid, putting it on, making it finger tight, and then I got a big decision to make, so I'll, I'll tell you about it in a second. We'll discuss it in a second. So uh, I got just a couple of more lids to put on. Okay, put it on, turn it, finger tight. So a little bit of what I've been learning. You bring it up to the one inch mark so this way it doesn't uh, overspill. They call that siphoning. So this heats up and expands and cooks and kills botulism and kills all the other bacteria that's in there. Okay, And then when it cools down it's like a suction and it draws down that lid where you actually can take the... Um, do I have one here? Yeah. This one has, is prepared butter. So this is shelf stable. No refrigeration. Three years. I'll just put it up on the shelf. Okay. So, but the lid has to be on in a way where I can't pull it off. And I'm pulling it hard. Okay. Going to get my nails underneath there. Okay. So that when you overheat it, you don't overheat it. When you heat it properly and it cools down, it suctions this lid on. In case you were wondering... Why do they make these things with two-part lids? Well, that's because the suction from the cooling down period will seal the jar and it makes it killed of all the bacteria, killed of the botulism, and it uh, affixes the lid to the top. Okay? So now, here's what I got to do. All right? I want to use my, my new, uh, uh, where is it? This one, the Nesco. All right, I just got it yesterday. I only made water in it just to test it out. I got a wonderful bottle of water. If anybody wants to buy some holy water, here it is, and it's sealed. 
it won't even come off. I'm pulling up on that metal lid, okay? So it's sealed, it's in there, and it's been boiled, or whatever happens, for 75 minutes. All right, so I've got seven, but this will only hold five. So either I use the bigger canner or I use this one. I choose this one. I'll just do it in two shifts. I'm going to put, oh, first, let me show you one more thing. Because I dirtied these jars, I'm just going to run them in water, okay? Because I was not very, very neat. So I'm just going to dip them in this pan, level them out again, dip, dip, dip. See all the crap that's going in the water? That's because I was a sloppy canner. That's why they make funnels, people. They make funnels for people like me that just don't use them. I know that that's the right amount when I use that one cup. All right, so now I can put this in here. And I believe I could put five. So that's one, two, three, four. And these are the wide mouth jars. Yes, I can get five in here. Okay. So they are touching. So what am I going to do with these? I'm going to put this, uh, I'm going to put these in the fridge and I'll do them round two. Otherwise, I won't have the fun of using this guy. So the process is going to go like this. I put eight cups of water in here, which is basically two quarts. And I stood the one, two, three, four, five in here, which leaves two left. I'm going to put these in the fridge. They're uncooked because it's got raw chicken in it, raw chicken chunks. And they'll get cooked uh, on a second round. So I'm going to get to use this twice in a row. So this is going to build up heat. After it builds up heat, it's going to vent or exhaust, as they like to call it, E10. So the E10's got to go from exhaust 10 to exhaust 0. At exhaust zero, I got to close the top, very much like a pressure cooker, like an instant pot. I got to close the, the vent on the top, and then it takes over. It brings it up to temperature, and it steams the whole time, uh, it vents the whole time to keep it at uh, the 10 pounds. So it comes with two of the vent uh, babies on the top, okay? So we close this, and we lock it. All right, it comes with a black one and with a green one. The black one is 10 pounds. I'm in Miami. The, the water from the ocean is right outside. Okay, so our, we're like at about six or seven feet of elevation. Um, you gotta check your elevation. If you're above a thousand feet, you gotta pull off this green guy, I mean this black guy, and put the green guy in here. Okay, so we're gonna put it to exhaust, which is the proper spot. So it's got a little spot for airtight and a spot for exhaust. So now we're going to put uh, high pressure and then we're going to put time up and I want this to go all the way to 75. Now because it's a soup you can actually go less but I got raw chicken in here okay and I put it to 77. I wanted to show you. So we close the lid we bring this to where it says exhaust which is right there, okay? This works very much just like, a, um, an, like an Instant Pot. It's got an up position where it's, uh, it lets pss, the steam out, and then it's got a lower position where it exhausts, all right? So we're gonna put it to the exhaust, and if, uh, let's see if I can do this backwards. Where's the camera? There it is. All right, so we're gonna turn it on, Okay, so now I need to push high, and now I need to go to 75 minutes. So I'm going to push the plus over here until we get to 75. Why don't I just look at the monitor? Okay. Okay, there's 74, 75. I'm going to do two extra minutes, and then I'm going to push start. Okay, so we are on our way. So what this is doing now is called a digital chase. It's going round and round and round and round. So the first stage is it's going to bring up enough where it's going to vent. And we want to vent like everybody else for 10 minutes. I mean, that's I saw it on everybody's uh, videos. So this one's going to vent for 10 minutes. When it finishes venting for 10 minutes, that's what I got to listen for. It's going to beep one, two, three times. 
then I will change it to airtight. And then this is going to maintain with steam coming out a lot or a little, uh, it's going to maintain the 10 uh, pounds of pressure and the right temperature. And then when it's done venting, the E10 is exhaust 10, and then it'll count down to E0. And then it'll beep again, and I need to put it to airtight, and then I let it alone. It's finished. It will count down my 77 minutes, which is what I like. And I'm going to put it back to exhaust so I'm in the right spot. And I'll bring it back when I'm ready. I'm going to put these in the fridge so they'll be gone when I come back. And you'll wonder, where'd they go? It's in the fridge, okay? Uh, and then I will show you uh, what happens just because it's a lot of fun to do the canning. So this is the electric Nesco canner. They just got a little under a thousand units and they sold out within hours. And I was awake and watching at the right time. Let's make sure I close this correctly. Okay. Uh, and I ordered it and I got it. So, but it's sold out now. So to get an electric pressure canner, which is very different from electric pressure cooker. So the electric pressure cooker, if you do this, it'll kill you because it won't get the right temperature to kill botulism and the bacteria, and it won't seal the stuff properly, all right? This one goes to the right temperature and the right pressure, and you have to put in the right control knob on the top, green or black. Black, if you're under 1,000 feet, green if you're over 1,000 feet. Now, if you're exactly 1,000 feet, I'd use the green. Okay, be a big, I'll be back in a Peter's Kitchen Flash. Boom! We started from E10. We went down to E9. E7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And now it's going to go down to E0. And when we get the three beeps, I'm going to close the top. There's your three beeps. So now we're at E0. It wants me to close the vent. Whoa, silence. So now in a minute or so, or a few minutes, it's going to actually kick over to count down our 77 minutes. So now for the next 77 minutes, which is 75 plus Peter giving it a little extra, it's going to count down and go all the way down to zero. And when it goes down to zero, it's going to shut off. Shut off that pressure canner. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll be back when we're at zero and it goes to off. And it cools down because it's going to take about an hour to cool down. And then I'll open it up and I'll be back and take them out and show you the canned chicken tomato vegetable soup. Of the Nesco uh, pressure canner having taken over the canning duties. So we're, we're down actually to one minute. Let me show you. All right, so this is down to one minute on the clock. It's clock. So basically it brought us up to where we needed to get the 10 minute of venting. And then it counted down the 10 minutes of venting from 10 to zero. Actually it used the E, we're E letter here for exhaust. I don't think it could make a V here. <laughs> because of the digital outline. So it puts an E here and it starts at 10 and counts down to zero. At that point, you have to change um, the vent on the top like you would for a um, instant pot where you put it to uh, pressure release or pressure non-release. So now we get the three beeps. It counted down my 75 minutes which I put it at 72 to give it a couple of extra minutes and it brought it down to off, but it did shut itself off. So if I was out in the yard or I was doing something, uh, you know, and I wasn't here to catch it, it turned itself off and the pressure is coming out less and less and less. So let's say in about two hours, I'll be back and I will take out the, um, the, the jars of chicken, tomato, vegetable soup. I finished round one. I've got them here on the table. Oh, I was going to show it to you, but they're still too hot. H-O-T, hot. All right, so here's, uh, here's what they look like. I'll give you a front shot. So I got five and I got the last two actually going in here now. 
and if it was bigger I could put all seven in at the same time and that's why I have this guy right here let me turn this light on so you can see that's why I've got the Presto but since this is only two days old I couldn't wait to see it so now these are shelf ready a uh, shelf stable meaning they don't have to go in the refrigerator they're still bubbling I would actually pick one up can I pick one up and show this is dangerous I really should not do this honest nah, I'm not gonna do it <laughs> chicken puck, 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 puck. okay so if you like the show please subscribe hit the subscribe button hit the like button uh, write me a comment on the bottom I'm so grateful for you being here um, next I'm going to do, um, I need to do uh, heavy cream, I need to do chicken, and start getting some of those, and I need to show you how I make milk. I make my milk from heavy cream because the milk has too many carbohydrates, and I'm on keto, or actually the low carbohydrate to lose, uh, you know, the high blood sugar that the doctor said I have. So, uh, milk has got too many carbs. And I can't do it, but I love my milk, so I make my own. I'll teach you how to do it. I'll make a video. Do, do, do. Write me a comment. Say hello. It lets me know you're watching. And I want to say thank you to Mickey at Out the Back Door because I've been learning from her. And she has great videos. Go look at her. If you want to see how to do this correctly, go to Out the Back Door and watch Mickey. She does the butter. She does soup, she does meat, she does chicken, uh, all kinds of stuff. I'm sure she does, uh, you know, things I haven't even thought of. So I just wanted to let you know I was grateful because of the stuff that I learned over there. Another YouTube channel with another fellow YouTuber. No, I don't know her. I'm just giving her praise because I learned so much and from some of the others. I'll be dropping hints as to who I'm watching and... Uh, and what I'm learning, or learning. All right, Peter from Peter's Kitchen. I will catch you later. Bye bye. Whoosh. You have just watched another Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Thank you for watching.